Hi, welcome to the first in my series of videos entitled AAC Basics. Today we are going to talk about the difference between static and dynamic display AAC devices. My name is Susan Berkowitz and I have been a speech and language pathologist for more than 35 years. I have focused on AAC for most of those years. Let me start by saying that while I've worked with people of all ages who use AAC, and much of the information in these videos will be general enough to cover everyone, many of the people I work with are children, so they may be the focus of some of these videos. AAC stands for Alternative Augmentative Communication, and it encompasses any form of communication that can add to or be in place of a person's speech. There are many types of AAC users, including those who use their, lose their speech through ALS or other neurological disorders, those whose speech is difficult to understand, such as some people with cerebral palsy, and some people who never develop speech. I work a lot with children with autism, and as many as 40% of them never develop sufficient verbal communication to meet their needs. AAC can involve no technology, such as sign language or use of pictures or word books, or it can involve a spectrum of technology solutions. Voice output devices, also called speech generating devices, are those electronic devices that speak. This can be recorded speech where someone other than the user records their voice into the message cells. Or it can be synthesized speech where the computer synthesizes human voices. While these were once very robotic and a little strange sounding, technology has vastly improved in recent years. Pictures or text are provided for the user to know which buttons to use to activate specific desired messages. These devices can also use what's called text-to-speech, where the user can type on a keyboard the message that they want. Static display devices are those whose picture or text displays stay the same until someone changes the paper overlays to a different set of pictures or words. They use digitized or recorded speech. Because only one page of messages can be accessed at any time, the vocabulary available is very limited. Because they use recorded speech, no word processing is possible. These limit the messages the user can generate. Dynamic display devices are computer-based. The pages can be linked together so that pushing on a button immediately takes you to a different page full of more possibilities. This allows for a great deal of vocabulary. These systems can be programmed to meet each individual user's needs and customized for the user's specific vocabulary choices. Because they are computer-based, the user can use a keyboard to spell out messages. These systems primarily use synthesized speech. Static display devices are less expensive, ranging from about $100 to under $3,000. They often require some manual dexterity to change the overlays to a different set of vocabulary words or messages. They offer less vocabulary than dynamic display devices, making them less functional for most users. In my opinion, they're useful for activity-based interactions, but not robust enough to be someone's complete AAC system. Dynamic display devices are more expensive. Dedicated devices usually start at more than four or five thousand dollars, although mobile devices and apps are now available at considerably less. They offer almost limitless vocabulary possibilities and multiple modes of access for people who can't use direct access with a finger. They offer possibilities for developing or using literacy skills and possibilities for syntax and vocabulary development, which are both important for young users. I'd like to offer here a quote from the American Speech Language Hearing Association that we would all do well to bear in mind when considering an AAC system for someone. I won't read it to you. I'll assume you can read. The technology that's available to us may be the best tool to reach our objectives for the user, but we must always remember to focus on the interaction. The tool doesn't do the user any good, 
if they can't use it to interact with people to communicate effectively. Often, dynamic to display offers the best option for true interaction by providing the user with the ability to generate whatever message they want to say. Novel utterances are comprised of separate words that are put together for whatever the person wants to say at the given time. Too often in the past, and on static display devices, we try to guess what the person is going to want to say and provide whole phrases or sentences. AAC users who are able to tell us say that this can be very, very frustrating. Now that you know the difference between static and dynamic display devices, stay tuned for more AAC Basics videos from me. In the meantime, visit my blog and my Teachers Pay Teacher store for more information, tips, and resources. Thank you.